All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, I got a vehicle down here that I thought would be a good case study to put on YouTube. It may be of interest to some of you guys. Um, I'm going to warn you in advance. I do not have a lot of the data saved on this vehicle. Um, I took video and I took um, still photos that I was going to include into the video. And unfortunately, uh, somehow they got deleted. So I don't know what happened. Uh, but regardless of that, I think there's something that uh, can be said for this type of uh, uh, vehicle and this type of a problem. And I'll go through the process with you guys of how we diagnose this vehicle and what exactly is going on, okay? Because this is actually something that touches on a lot of different things. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I, some, of my, some of the things that I have put up in the past I've gotten some incredibly weird people uh, responding. Uh, you know, it, it's pr quite apparent they're not watching the entire video and they're complaining about how mechanics are thieves and we're this and we're that and I'll do the, you know, the work myself. And it seems like every time I say something uh, or I touch on the subject of why technicians are actually out here doing what we do and why people should try to respect us a little bit more and bring vehicles to us instead of attempting repairs when you're not experienced, uh, I get flamed for it, okay? So uh, it seems like that's the way nowadays with people. They, they, you know, they get on a computer, they go behind their keyboard, and they talk crap to people that they don't even know. Uh, you know, I'm not a thief, I'm not a scumbag, and I'm not a person that takes advantage of my customers. I don't overcharge my customers. I don't uh, tell them that I want to, that, you know, I want to use my parts because I think that they're uh, uh, what do you call it? Because I think that it, uh, you know, it's a way for me to make more money. That's not what I do. I do it because I want to do the job right the first time and I want the car gone and I want the customer happy and not breaking down down the road someplace. This has nothing to do with, uh, with making money on the parts, okay? Yes, the parts are marked up. Sorry, guys. That's the way it works. It's a business. Uh, do I make 100% on the parts? Or 200 or 300 percent, as I'm being, you know, as these people are accusing us of. No, absolutely not. But the fact is that there is a markup on the parts. Um, it's it's the way it is. I mean, it's business. Okay, uh, we have to make something on the parts. If we don't, we'll be out of business. And then uh, all these guys that talk this crap about being able to fix the car themselves, and we don't need a technician. Those are the ones that usually come here with their tail between their legs. Okay, just so we get that out of the way. With that said, uh, I'm not going to go into that anymore. This video is about a vehicle that was worked on by a customer. He was not my customer. I know this guy. I don't even know this guy. I've never had any communication with him. Uh, the whole reason this, this vehicle came here is because a friend of mine who owns a shop in town had, uh, had reached out to me a while back. And he said he's got this, this 2002 Silverado up there. And he's jammed up with a bunch of stuff. And the truck seems like it's going to be a headache. And would you, you know, would you mind stopping by and taking a look at it? So I said, yeah, no problem. Uh, he gave me some information on the phone so that the truck, you know, cranks like it's out of time, uh, kicks back. It'll start sometimes, uh, you know, easier than others. It'll, it, it absolutely has a dead misfire when it's running. It runs like crap, okay? And it's a 4.3 Vortex. So I said, okay, um, I'll stop up and look at it. So when I, when I got off work that day, I went up there, and I really didn't bring any equipment or anything. And I, I was thinking about it, and I said, like, well, let me just go up and evaluate it. I could always go back. You know, let me just take a quick look. He has equipment up there. And I wanted to just be, get a baseline on the vehicle. So that's what I did. I went up, and we did some, we did some testing on it. And what I did here is I'm just going to show you. I wrote out, uh, again, as I did in the last video that I had done, uh, some stuff here on what's you know what's going on with the vehicle okay. all right so what happened well we get to we get up there and we confirm exactly what he says okay it's difficult to start this truck uh it does kick back as if timing or something is off uh the engine does start runs like crap and it has a misfire for sure uh bad misfire so i shut it down i um i checked the oil I want to make sure that, you know, we're working with something with oil in it, good quality, everything's okay, uh, you know, at that point. Um, the plugs on the vehicle were replaced uh, before I had touched it, okay. Uh, they had the correct plugs in it. Um, 
we just verified that, made sure the gap was good. And at that point, I want to scan test this thing and see what the computer is complaining about. This check engine light is obviously on, it's flashing. And what we have is, you know, we're going to look at initial uh, codes, we're going to look at some data and see if we see anything that's skewed in data first. That's a quick, simple, um, you know, driver's seat type of test. Uh, try to get to whatever information we can. Okay, that's what you want to do at this point is collect data. We have PO300, which is random misfire. We have PO304, which is a specific cylinder misfire number four. And that was it. That was the only codes in the system uh, that I found at that point, okay? Um, okay, so what do I have to work with? I don't have much right now, but I want to go a little further, see what I can find out. So I'll do the testing I can. He's got a fuel gauge up there. Throw the fuel gauge on it. Monitor the pressure. Make sure that the pressure will hold when you turn the key on. It does hold. Uh, there, so that's telling me there's no leak. These injectors and the, and the um, fuel pressure regulator are under the intake on this vehicle. Um, at this point, I want to make sure that I don't have a leaking injector or a regulator because they will do some crazy things on those trucks. Uh, and I'm sure most of you guys already know that. These things have been around forever and always had that problem. So first things first, right? Okay, so we, we verify fuel pressure holds. Uh, at that point, I have the scan tool hooked up, which is capable of doing bi-directional testing. My next move while I'm in there and I have the gauge on it, let's do an injective balance test and get it out of the way. And this, these, the reason I do things the, the way I do them is because I wanna get, like I said, every bit of information that I can as quickly as possible. And guys will say like, oh, you know, that's probably good, this is probably good. Granted, you may be right, but I want to know right off the bat if, if I could do a quick test and I can absolutely verify a component is good, do the test. It's, it's just right in front of you. There's no reason not to. So when I do the injector balance test, I find two injectors that are absolutely no good. Fantastic. That's, uh, that's, that's good information. Okay, We definitely have two broken injectors. I run the test uh, two times or three times. I come back with the exact same result each time. Uh, there was a drop. It wasn't like there was no control on the injectors, like a broken wire or anything like that, or an open in the injector. They did work, but there was about 8 PSI or 6 PSI of difference between the two injectors and the rest of them. So we know we got bad injectors in this truck. One of them was cylinder number four. Uh, I believe the other one was cylinder six. I forget, but I, one of them was definitely number four cylinder. So... Hmm, where do we go from here, right? It needs injectors, guys. That's right off the bat. Now, I don't start this truck back up at this point, okay? Um, I want to just look over quickly under the hood, just check some stuff over. I go out there, I notice the distributor cap is not tight on the, on the vehicle. Now, for any of you guys that are familiar, um, I'm going to zoom out here a second. These here are the... This is actually the distributor cap that was on the truck. These caps are notorious, notorious for cross-firing and being complete garbage, okay? They have all sorts of issues with these caps. When they're not tight, and, I, and I'm not talking they was a little loose, it was, it was loose. It was not, the, the distributor was broke, um, which I'm going to show you in a second. If you look, the ears broke over here. This hole here is stripped, so there's nothing to really hold this distributor cap on, okay? So now, the fact that it's kicking back when you're cranking it, the fact that you have um, bed injectors, you have a bed, a broken distributor, these are things that need to be fixed before you can go any further. There's no, there is no testing at this point for much else uh, with broken components, okay? Absolutely broken stuff. The only other thing that I was able to do before I went any further was I tried to get the distributor cap tight. I started the truck, and uh, once I got it running, I wanted to look at my cam retard PID on the data. Well, that was about, uh, if memory serves, somewhere around 16. That should be around zero. So uh, that's, that's right there is, you know, is also no good. Uh, that probably has to do with the distributor at this point, and I can't go any further. I don't, I, I just, there's not a lot I can do here. So what we did was, uh, he, he decided to call the customer up, inform him of what was found, and see where he wanted to go from there. So at that point, 
I left and he put a, the customer, you know, the customer wanted to, says he wants to fix the truck. He puts the, uh, he puts the injectors in it and this is, he's a busy shop and he had no, he basically got the injectors in the truck and he said he confirmed that it ran better. Um, but it still had a misfire, some, like a slight misfire was still there, not as bad, but that was where he was with the truck at that point. So the, distri the distributor was not replaced, injectors were changed, and there was obviously a little bit of a difference in the way it ran. Uh, the next step of this uh, thing was, I didn't hear anything from my buddy for a little bit, uh, was doing my, you know, what I had to do down here. And then he called and he says, look, he goes, I'm going to, I don't have time to get any further with this. He says, can I bring it down to you? And I says, yeah, no problem. He said, I didn't put the distributor in. He said, if you, you know, you feel you have to do that, do what you have to do. So he brings the truck down. And again, I, I did feel that it ran different. It ran slightly better. And I, and I mean, you know, it had injectors that were working, but, um, at this point, what struck me was it had no codes in it, uh, when I scanned it this time and it had been running a little bit. Um, so at that point, what do you got to do? You know, what do you do at this point? You got to, you got to look back at data. I verified again that the, the, uh, cam retard PID was out of spec. Uh, I pulled the distributor on the truck and I wanted to inspect it a little further. And I did find some stuff that I didn't like on this, on this distributor. Now it's going to be hard, uh, to see this, I think, but I, the rotor, I don't know where the rotor ended up actually. Is that it? I don't know. Let me, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of hold this as steady as I can and I'm going to turn it. I don't know if you can see that, but this is bent. Okay, this, this is where the rotor mounts. This is bent. So if you listen, you can hear that uh, it's, it's definitely making noise. There's all rust inside. This distributor is no good. Uh, just for that alone, it looks like somebody pried this possibly uh, under here trying to take the distributor out and they bent it. The other thing that I noticed and it's probably not going to come up on camera very well is the gear on this. Let's see if I can get you guys to, I don't know if you could see that too well, but this gear is worn and it's probably not going to come up very well on camera. It's, it's, it, there's a ridge there on each gear. You could feel it uh, with the screwdriver. It's obviously worn. So we put a distributor in it. Uh, the distributor came with the new cap rotor. We put a, uh, we put an original equipment unit in and initially, as soon as I, well, as soon as I put that in, there was a huge difference. When I started the truck, there was no more, uh, you know, timing, like it was kicking back or anything like that. It started right up. Um, the, the cam retard was in spec at that point. So a worn distributor it is uh bad distributor whatever that fixed that okay so now what i'm trying to get at guys is that this is all steps okay there's all there's steps to uh to, to diagnose in these vehicles there's uh there's procedures you have to follow and if you go down if you go down the line with this stuff and you check the things that need to be tested you will find the problem this vehicle has had more than one problem and again, I've never seen this vehicle before. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing to do with history on this thing or anything like that. I don't know anything about this truck. I just know that it was worked on by the owner. And other than that, I know that after he worked on it, he said he started developing issues with the way it was running. That's what he had told my, my friend. Okay. Um, so now, uh, at this point, I'm trying to think of what we did next. Uh, I ran the vehicle for a little bit actually because it was running better. Misfires were no longer counting. Um, I had, you know, like I said, the the, uh, the cam was in the right, you know, the cam retard was in spec. I no longer had misfires. I no longer had any check engine light on. I let it run a little bit to see if it set any codes. No code set. Uh, monitored, you know, important data PIDs. And what I noticed that I didn't like was the fuel trims. Let's go back to the keyboard here. Okay, so there's where we were with this truck. Fuel trims, bank one was 
uh, I'm sorry, it was minus 18%. Bank two was positive 18%. So what are you guys thinking? The, the, uh, what are you guys thinking about with this right now? Mass air, maybe? Um, vacuum leak, O2s. Where do you go? Ask yourself that question. Where do you go right now? You have, you have complete opposites on these two, on these two banks, all right? Uh, idle, uh, idle speed on this thing. Uh, the O2s do respond, by the way, to enrichment, okay? They do respond. Uh, idle speed on this vehicle, 1,200 RPMs, warm engine, uh, you know, 200 degrees. IAC is displaying 0%. Okay, indicating that the PCM is bringing the idle speed down. It's trying to bring it down in spec. So what's going on here? Did somebody play with the throttle body? Is there a vacuum leak? What do we got going on here? Uh, the mass air is reading 11 grams a second. That's because the idle is above normal. Okay, we're not at idle. So we're going to read more air coming into the engine if we're not at idle. Uh, again, coolant temp is in spec. All other data also shows to be in spec. I don't see any problems anywhere. Um, and again, no codes, okay? This thing ran for a little while, no codes. Uh, what do you do, okay? What, what are you looking for at this point? Well, my first thing is I'm gonna go to the throttle body and take a look there and see if somebody was tampering around, messing around. Um, what I find is that the idle screw was turned all the way out, which means that the, you know, the base idle screw, which, which is directly attached to where the throttle plate lands, uh, where the throttle blade would be, okay? So like you would, you would turn that screw in, it would open the plate. If you turn it out, it closes the plate. This plate was closed to where if you hit the throttle, you know, the pedal, it would actually stick because the blade was binding inside the, inside the housing. Throttle blade is closed. The engine, for all intents and purposes, should be dropping dead on us, right? It's not. So what is that telling us? It's telling us we have a vacuum leak someplace. We have, some, we have air that's unmetered coming in someplace. So I smoke tested this thing. There was no indication of a problem any place. I could not find a leak. Sometimes when you can't find a vacuum leak, it's because the vacuum leak is, is internal. It's not something you're going to see, okay? I spray it around first quick. You know, you have your little methods, your stuff, you know, just to see if you pick up on something. Spray around with some carb spray. You could use... Uh, you know, propane, whatever you got, try to try to pick up a leak. You'll see the difference in idle. It'll smooth out or run worry, whatever. You're, you're going to see a change if you pick up on that. If you hit on that leak, there was there was no change. The smoke test uh, through the intake showed me absolutely nothing. So I started to do what? I blocked off the brake booster hose, right? Made sure that the brake booster is not the cause of the problem. Um, then I went to the PCV valve, and actually, I'm going to take you outside. All right, guys, so what I want to show you is once we had pulled this thing apart, and it's pretty obvious to see here. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit just in case you guys can't see it. Uh, if you look right here and you compare that to the other side, take a look here, here, and it's pretty obvious what's going on. This gasket, was actually put on backwards. This goes this way. You'll see now how the ports match up. Pin is obviously not going to hold it. It's back, you know, the pin is upside down, but get the drift. So, when this thing was installed, it was installed backwards. And, um, we're waiting now for new gaskets to come in. I'm gonna pop them in, put everything back together, hopefully not backwards, and uh, we'll see how she runs after the, after the repair is done. So this thing had multiple issues. As I said, it had, um, it had a broken distributor, it had uh, 
Uh, it had a bed, two bed injectors, and obviously, as you can see, the gasket is on backwards for the intake manifold. Now, um, the injectors, you know, they fail. That's not something you can say was done to the truck. It's just something that happened. Distributor gear being worn is obviously another thing that, you know, happens. The fact that the distributor has uh, a problem where it's bent, it's a whole other story. And uh, the fact that this is on backwards is another story. So take it for what it's worth. All right, so we'll see what happens after the repair.